Okay, so the observer. Um, so the main thing with the observer is uh, let's use let's use uh, I'll find a different object one day and uh, the mug. But the mug is quite 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 good as well. So the mug. So recognize with the mug that um, a mug is a meaning for most people unless you're a mug addict. A mug is a meaningless object. Yeah. So we're going to, so it's like, and we are on camera, but um, it is the thing of when there's obser observation of the mug, it's like, you know, the question to ask yourself silently is, is the mug you? In your, not a mental question, in your experience, mm -hmm. when this object is held in, and there's observing of it, is there any spiritual recognition that I am the mug? No, there isn't. It's, it's, there's clear detached witnessing that a mug is an object, but one is not the object that's witnessing the mug. So there's no confusion. If, if the mug passes before, it's, one is still not confused that one is the mug. You know, like if, a, if an object passes before, still, when a meaningless object passes before, that which observes it is not confused that it is the mug. Mm -hmm. Also, even if the mug is in front of you or if it's not there at all, it's not like one has lost oneself if the mug is not in the room. So one, you know, there's clear witnessing that the mug. This is very important on a spiritual experiential level, because that the observer of a mug. I mean, I, I like to use the word object. You know, a, a mug is an object, i.e., it has it's 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 tied to form, and it's limited in nature. Yeah. It's an object or, or it has form and it's limited. So it's got a, like a, there's, one can see how the shape of the mug, how tall it is, you know, whatever it is. Also, it's quite meaningless or it hasn't got any special qualities. It's quite valueless, this mug. Now, I mean, The Course in Miracles, you know, some of my, two, some of my favorite lessons in A Course in Miracles are all my thoughts are meaningless and I'm not a body, I'm free for I am as God created me. And I think, you know, and you know, like, uh, I'm not a body, I'm free, for I am as God created me. He repeats that lesson over and over and over again. You know, like he'll have multiple sections in the course where he just frame it, like, repeat that. I'm not a body, I'm free from it. And, you know, it talks about meaningless thoughts. And I think, you know, I really, my view is the addiction to thinking and the addiction to the body are like vicious addictions, vicious addictions. The attachment to identifying or being uh, absorbed in body and thoughts. So that's why there's huge emphasis. All my thoughts are meaningless and I'm not a body, I'm free. Which is basically like I cancel my belief. I am this body, I'm an infinite being. God did not create, God did not create me as a body, so it's not real. God did, you know, God did not create me as thought, so it's not real. Okay, so the next thing is like thoughts. Now this is, this is to be done, you know, um, there's a high probability that, that people are identified with their thoughts right now. If not, brilliant, you know, there's a Buddha in the room, uh, which is fantastic. So, thoughts. Now this is again a spiritual, a spiritual exercise. So, you know, when thoughts pass by, is there, um, now, is there a witnessing? Or is there an observing of thoughts? Is there something that observes thoughts? Now remember, this was quite easy with a mug. You know, like no one is confused that they are the mug when it passes by. A mug is an object that passes by. The observer is observing a mug pass by. And the observer is not confused that it is the mug. Now thoughts. Thoughts by their nature are form. They're limited. You know, the grass is green is different to the, to the cloud, the sky is blue. So they're, they're passing by. So they have form. They're limited in nature and, they, and they're transitory and they pass by. Like when a cloud passes by in the sky, in one, usually, most people are not confused. They are the clouds passing by. Or if you say, yeah, yeah, you are those clouds. I mean, very few people would be would be confused. Now thoughts. Is there, is one the thoughts? Are you a thought 
or are you that which... Now, this is not a mental question. If you go into your thinking, just don't go into your thinking. But is there an observing? It's a spiritual experience. Is there a witness or an observer of thoughts? Yeah. So, now, this, it's, it's uh, just like with the first exercise with the mug, thoughts now. Is there a witnessing of thoughts? If you, if you experience that, that's a spiritual experience, to recognize that there is a detached witnessing of thoughts. As soon as you're in the detached witnesser, or the observer of thoughts, they'll lose their power. Mm. You know, like when it is, I'm a hypnotherapist, when you go into a movie, like let's say there's, I don't know, what kind of movie, a, a movie with lots of drama in it, you know, and, uh, and, you, and, you get, and you go into hypnosis, and it's like you are the movie, but the, you are the characters going on in there. And if someone was to just tap you on the shoulder and say, it's just a movie, stop screaming. <laughs> You know, a, you know, you'd go, oh, what, what am I screaming? You know, that, that wolf is not going to eat me, or whatever it is. Because you're, you've snapped out of the addiction, and now there's a space. <clears throat> there's the recognition that the movie is an illusion. It's fictitious. It's not the truth of, you, you just got lost in a horror movie. This is the same thing with the, being the observer of thoughts. As soon as you're the detached observer of thoughts, they lose their power. And in fact, you realize that you were caught up in a nightmare. You know, you're caught up in the nightmare of the hypnosis of being in your thoughts. There's huge freedom. <clears throat> when you, you know, one of the things with consciousness is, you know, you only experience uh, what is interesting or what you identify with. You can't experience something you don't identify with. So if, you're observe if you experience being in the observer of thoughts, now, it, the thoughts will, there'll be a detachment and the thoughts will start to evaporate because they're not interesting. I mean, it, it's well known, I mean, you'll, everyone will know this from their own experience, like anything that's meaningless, you don't, you don't register throughout the day. Like, uh, like, you know, if you're a handbag addict, like Michael Kors addict, you'll notice every single handbag that everyone's, not. but if you're, if you, I mean, if you're, if you're not a handbag addict, you won't notice any handbags throughout the whole day because in your consciousness it's meaningless, it's boring. It's interesting. There's nothing that registers it. It's absolutely, you know, so if it was, um, I don't know, like red pillows, you know, if you're a food addict, I mean, I, I tend to talk, it might trigger people, but, you know, if there was a donut in the room, I would know. Like if you asked someone who's not a donut addict, were there any donuts in the room, uh, uh, they wouldn't, they'd go, what are you talking about? I mean. <laughs> What my experience of what happened in that group was there was lots of lovely conversation and I didn't, I, you know, I wasn't, you know, I didn't recognize there was any donuts in the room. I mean, how, why is it you only remember donuts and, and that person doesn't remember donuts? Because it's uninteresting. Mm -hmm. If you speak to someone who's not interested in their thoughts, you know, they're always in the eternal now. Thoughts do not exist for them, you know, because they're not identified with the story that's going on. And actually, when there's zero interest in thoughts, you go into the thoughtless now. Just like if there was no, in, you know, if I had an, a handbag addict and they went into the, um, the detached observer, then they would live in a world without handbags. And you'd say to them, one day, they, you know, one year, you saw them a year ago, and they were, hand, you know, they'd say, I saw 75 Michael Kors handbags yesterday. And then, and then once they've detached from making, making it totally meaningless, and they've just gone to the observer, and there's the interested observer, I'll go into that, there's the interested observer which still registers thoughts and handbags. But then there's the detached observer which has no interest. It has zero interest, it gives no meaning to even wanting to register a handbag or a thought. Today it's about hand, it could be donuts or thoughts, it doesn't really matter. Then you live in a world where donuts do not register or thoughts do not register. You know, the only reason thoughts register, and I'm talking a lot about thoughts, this is not mental. You know, once you're in the observer, just let go of the hook to the next thought. If, now, when you're in the observer, you know, thoughts are like, the reason why thoughts are so addictive is because there's so much specialist projected onto certain thoughts. You don't remember meaningless thoughts. If a thought popped up in consciousness like, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the leaf is green, you won't remember it. A split second later, it's gone. It's like nothing identified with it. and Nothing will try and remember it. Mm -hmm. It will not stay in the next instant. The only reason people are 
holding a thought in the now is because that thought had some kind of history, meaning or value attached to it. Otherwise, if all the thoughts were 100% meaningless, you wouldn't even have to do the exercise. There'd just be presence in every moment. Mm -hmm. and, you know, your, the essence of who you are would not be anything to do with thinking. If one would not have a self-center of being a thinker. That would dissipate. So remember, now, now a little tip is once you're in the observer, which starts to go into the now, starts to go into just pure presence, when you're in there, do not pick up the next thought. As soon as you identify with any thought, you're back in your, your thinking. So that, that's, the, that's the tip. So once you're just pure observing or pure stillness or pure presence, you know, do not pick up a thought. Because I'll, I'll explain it from mine. Everyone might have slightly different... When I'm in thoughts, it's like I go into constricted mental... It's like almost I go into a mental, like, thing. When there's the observer, it's like infinite presence, mm -hmm. infinite witnessing, expansive witnessing. I mean, these, you can only use words for it, but there is no, no limits to the presence of what I am. As soon as you're in the identifying with thoughts, there's this constricted in your head kind of men mentalization. And the experience is, I am, because you, you've identified, your experience of who you are becomes the mentalization. It's like, I am this story that's going on right now. So once you're in the witness, so don't hook in. Don't hook in. All your thought, just for this meeting, all your thoughts are meaningless. Once you go out of this room, you can start identifying and picking up and going off into the future, the past, or donuts or handbags, whatever it is. But just stay in the presence. You know, your thoughts for this duration of this meeting, all your thoughts are meaningless. Okay? Now, I'm not talking to your head. Even though I'm going to be talking, and everyone's going to be talking, but I would encourage everyone not, you know, like the, a famous saying is, wear the world like a loose garment. You know, wear the world like a loose garment. Wear, wear everything that's going on in this room today like it's unimportant. One of the things that you learn is, you know, you experience what you track. I like this word tracking. So you switch off your tracking mechanisms. You know, just let everything be empty. Okay, so, so the addic that's one of the primary ones, the addiction to thoughts. So once you're in the witness, so don't pick up thoughts. You know, they're not interesting for the duration of this thing. The next one is the body. Yeah. If you don't go to the body. Now, people who are very fixated on the body. Now, recognize with the body, I usually, I mean, I've been doing the observer now for about, I think, is it? Yeah, it must be like nearly 20 years of doing the, practicing the observer and feel the feelings like my life depended upon it, and The Course of Miracles, and Dr. Hawkins. So that's a long time. Now, if anyone would like to, like, if any, you know, people with eating disorders tend to have body obsession. So, uh, and I haven't had body obsession now straight for, um, for nine years. And it's like, even I'll forget, you know, sometimes there's no, there's no awareness of the body at all. It's very easy to let go if you want to. If you don't want to let go of something, just keep holding on. Uh, but, it, you know, the question is, how limited do you want to be in your daily experience? Mm -hmm. You know, how contracted? You know, and I, I personally want to be more and more free. I want to be holding on to less and less baggage. That's, that, but everyone's free to hold on to as much as they want to. But the, the body, you know, this is, I love this exercise because, you know, if you're aware of your body right now, like, there is a, like, there's, something's tracking, something's hooking into the body. Something like is aware, if you've got, especially if you've got aches and pains and, and, and things going on. But if you haven't got that, one is at least aware of the shape of the body, the location of the body. Okay? But, you know, but if there's awareness of the height and the location or even things going on, those are, that's an object. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just like with the mug and just like with the thoughts. If there's awareness of an object, that's limitation. Yeah, that's contraction. But some, if there's something limited, then there's always something that's observing the limited. Yeah. So if, if, there's, a, if there's a feeling like, if I feel like I'm a, like a, I don't know, like a cylinder in a location, but there is something here which is observing, observing the body. So be the detached observing of the body. As soon as you do it, it's a spiritual experience. 
and it's almost like you bust out and you become more limitless when you're the observer. If you hook into the body, if you identify, if it's interesting or meaningful, then you become contracted to experiencing yourself as a body. But if you recognize now, it's almost like going into peripheral vision or into a witnesser. I won't, I won't go into intellectual, I and mean, people who have out of body experience is another, is another thing. But there is a witnessing. There is actually a witnessing of, of, of the body. There's actually a witnessing of everything going on here, which is impersonal as well, not tied to any body. But anyway, don't go, want to go on to things. So hopefully now there's an experience of that which is witnessing the body. And if one is the detached witnessing of the body, one becomes bodiless. You know, there's an expansive witnessing. Is, now, all of these things are contracting one into limitation. Next one is location. Now, this is a more subtle one. Is there any sense of being located in this room? If there is, that's also like information. That's like data. Something observes location. Yeah. Now, this is a, these are all spiritually... Not, not, nothing I'm saying is mental. Something is observing or witnessing a sense of location. Be the observer of that and see if if that which observes location and that which witnesses locations, if any location exists in that. Also, people especially who work or have things where they're time boundary, you know, you have to get this done by 3 o'clock and this done by 3.40, they have a lot of time tracking. You know, it's almost like they have a mechanism counting seconds going on in them. You know, and if you tell them, like, you know, how long has gone by, gone by since we first started talking, they'll say, well, it's about 2 minutes and 15 seconds. You know, but there's something here that observes time and is not interested in time. There is a witnesser of the sense of time or the tracking of time. There's an observing. So be the observing of the sense of time. See if you can switch off that mechanism and be that which witnesses it. Now the witnesser, the detached witnesser, is not ha doesn't have any interest in something. He doesn't care. And in this witnessing of the sense of time, see if in your experience does time exist in that which has no interest in time. Now these are all spiritual experiences. Once you get one spiritual experience of being the witnesser of the body and the body disappear, then you know that the body, your being a body, is not your true self. It's what we call the limited self, you know, or the ego self, or the, or the mind body, uh, uh, the experiencing, or the contracted mind body self. But actually, the true self, the spirit, is not limited to body, thoughts, location, time, or anything that's contracted or limited. So, as you do these, ex now, whenever, each time you go to the observer, the witnesser of something that's an object, or something that's passing by, or fluctuating, See if um, that which remains is limited or contracted. And if it is, what's observing that? Okay, so what we're going to do now is just have about three minutes of silence. And I'd like everyone just to...